Democrats have introduced two articles of impeachment against President Trump. Also, Sancta Comey strikes again. The dossier was for idiots. CNN has the worst national security analyst in the business. And a vegan eats meat and finds out, well, you'll have to see. Coming up. Welcome to the Buck Saxon Show, everybody. Quite a day we jump into together. we got a lot going on here. The aftermath of the Inspector General report, I was able to read through it last night. I skimmed a few parts. It was like 500 pages, but I read the substance of it. See, that's the thing. That's the kind of honesty I bring you here in the Freedom. A lot of people, oh, I read every word. I took notes on everything. You know, I read it, but there were some parts. I'm like, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. FBI procedures need to change to blah, blah, blah. They're not going to change anything. Start with that. But let's get to that and also uh, the articles of impeachment that were introduced today. In fact, just to to bring you into the zone with me, uh, I think we should probably hear from uh, Congressman Nadler, who, in his voice of greatest gravitas, had this to say to announce the articles of impeachment. Uh, Play 15, please. The first article is for abuse of power. It is an impeachable offense for the president to exercise the powers of his public office to obtain an improper personal benefit while ignoring or injuring the national interest. That is exactly what President Trump did when he solicited and pressured Ukraine to interfere in our 2020 presidential election. When the House investigated and opened an impeachment inquiry, President Trump engaged in unprecedented, categorical, and indiscriminate defiance of the impeachment inquiry. This gives rise to the second article of impeachment for obstruction of Congress. What happened to bribery? Hold hold on a second. I, I, I was promised bribery. There's no bribery charge? What about Russia collusion and all that stuff? The Mueller probe? What about all the obstruction, the 10 counts of obstruction that they pretended were serious? Where's all that? No? This is the best they can do? This is what they've got? uh, Abuse of power and obstruction of justice? We we can start with the second one first. This is rather straightforward. Because the first one is a little bit more interesting as as a point of, of debate or point of argument. Second one's not interesting at all. The president does not do everything Congress says, does not give up all of his Article II powers, does not decide that he needs to waive all executive privilege and the courts have no say in any of this. And he should be obstructed for that. The same, I'm sorry, he should be impeached for that because it's obstruction. Or I guess he's, he's being obstructed in that he can't act as president because of all the crap they're doing. That's, that's a part of this. That's one area that I think uh, we can dispense with rather quickly. Uh, this is the same president, by the way, who went through a two-year-long special counsel probe. Notice how the, the process is always weaponized against him. They never find anything real, but then the process itself becomes their complaint. We're doing this thing to you. You know, we're, we're the IRS and we're auditing you and you don't like it. So clearly we're justified in auditing you even more. This is their Soviet logic. This is how they approach the situation. This is, I guess, what we are supposed to expect from the disgracefully dishonest Democrats. You have Jerry Nadler, who was once a vocal opponent of impeachment when it was a Democrat on the hot seat, Bill Clinton, saying that you could not have a partisan impeachment. At least then there was an impeachment based on an identifiable and clearly proven crime, as well as a series of other misdeeds and mishaps, including some in the Oval Office from the President of the United States at the time. But Democrats are here. They're doing it. They are impeaching this president because... If nothing else, the left-wing base demands it, and it does not give me any real pleasure to say this, but I do think that a lot of Democrats across the country, a lot of our fellow Americans, and in fact many Democrats in elected office, have gone insane. They've lost it. They're no longer capable of reason or being reasoned with. 
they complain about, I'll get to the abuse of power, but they complain about the obstruction of Congress through this probe. Meanwhile, they change the rules to fit their whim at any moment. And also they are slamming this whole thing into a timeline and have made explicit, and I will you will hear from none other than Shifty Schiff himself, have made explicit that they want to do this, they want to rush the process because it does not conform to their politically necessary timeline. Here you have Adam Schiff giving us his uh, shadiest of explanations. Play clip four. If it takes us another eight months to get a second court or maybe a Supreme Court decision, people need to understand that is not the end of the process. It comes back to us and we ask questions because he no longer has absolute immunity and then he claims something else that his answers are privileged and we have to go to back to court for another eight or 16 months. The argument, why don't you just wait, amounts to this. Why don't you just let him cheat in one more election? Why not let him cheat just one more time? Why not let him have foreign help just one more time? Ah, but you see, Schiff, what you have told us here completely undermines the second article of impeachment, which is that the president is being impeached because you admit you cannot have the courts adjudicate this, which would be their rightful role. So it is the position of the Democrats in Congress that this president has no recourse to balance Article Two and Article One powers under the Constitution, has no recourse as the commander in chief and the head of the executive branch of government to congressional overreach. Congre- Congress gets to say, do this or else. Give us this information or else. That's actually not how it works. But he says, we can't wait. We can't wait for judicial decision. Where else would this be acceptable for Democrats? Think about this for a moment. He's exposed himself here. We see exactly what the Democrat plan really is. If they respect the process so much, and if it is Trump showing disrespect, yes, a word, Don Lemon, disrespect to the process, that in fact what we see here is the Democrats completely undermining their own argument because it's not supposed to go based on a timeline of what they need and what they want they don't get to change those rules they don't get to accelerate this because it would make them happy to do so that's what they're doing imagine for a moment here if the president said I'm going to impose a travel ban on a few countries and I can't go to the courts, and I'm going to order the executive branch to do it, irrespective of what any court says, because the courts are going to slow me down, and I know I'm going to win in the end, but we don't have time to wait for the courts. They would call him a tyrant. And yet Schiff is engaged in the same form of tyranny right now. You have, you have no recourse. You're not allowed to see if, in fact, the law is on your side. You do what we say, or you're out. These people are a disgrace. This is a debacle, but they are Democrats and they're not going to change. Our only real option is to face them and fight them. And that is what we do here day in and day out. It's also fascinating to me if Trump was as terrible as they say he is, if he was this awful authoritarian, a a traitor, a cheat, someone that has no idea how to govern, why is the country in the single greatest period of, a th- of three years of peace and economic prosperity of my adult lifetime. I, I would like some... Th- that is a factual statement. That is a true statement. There is no three-year period you could compare it to since I was in college. We're going on 20 years now. It's kind of scary to say that. Where you have as much peace and as much prosperity as you do right now in America. And yet they say that we should all be terrified of the prospect of the 2020 election and the interference. By the way, what Schiff said there is so horrifically dishonest and wrong. And yet he won't be challenged on this by any of his lackeys in the media. They're a joke. They're clowns. 
They've shown us who they are, and they know there's no going back, really. So they just have to double down. He said the president wants to, quote, cheat in one more election, cheat one more time. He's just saying that the president cheated in the last election. He is giving voice to exactly what is underlying all of this, whether it's the Mueller probe or impeachment or any of it, which is that Democrats are a bunch of psychotic, whiny, sore losers who do not accept that Hillary Clinton did not win the 2016 election. They just, they don't believe that that happened, that she lost, that they didn't get their way, that their ideas will not manifest themselves throughout the federal government and throughout the culture and throughout everything in our day-to-day lives in the way that they had planned and expected, and they simply cannot handle it. They live in an alternate reality. Hillary lost. Deal with it, Libs. But they won't, because they have people like Adam Schiff. And I have to love, as they're announcing this today, you had Schiff and now they're, you know, they're congratulating the committee on all the good work they did. They are absolutely tearing at any sense of, of community and any sense of good faith, fair play, and decency between the political parties in this country. I mean, this is the unfairness of the Kavanaugh situation played out through an impeachment process. These people are just power-mad totalitarians. Nothing slows them down. Nothing is sacred to them other than the pursuit of power. That's it. Cheat in one more election. Cheat one more time. Who thinks that there was any cheating in the last election that Trump was involved in after the two-year special counsel probe? People who don't care what facts are. People who don't care that they put the administration through the most aggressive slanted investigation possible of a presidential administration and they came up with nothing in fact so clearly nothing that there was they didn't include they have yet to include anything from the Mueller probe in this impeachment all oh, remember that about the the 10 counts of obstruction i had to go on tv you know former democrat prosecutors or former democrat doj obama appointees oh well these are obvious counts of criminal obstruction in the Mueller probe Really? Because doesn't seem like it. None of those were going to fly. And now they think this one will? No. This is all just about creating the asterisk on this presidency. You see, they have to go into the 2020 election for their own, their own psychological needs. The leftists, the socialists, the Democrats, they have to believe that 2016 didn't really happen the way that it did. That Trump didn't really win and that he has been an illegitimate president all along, and they also want to go into 2020 with the belief, which Adam Schiff is feeding directly into here, that if they lose again in 2020, it was also because of cheating, because they ultimately cannot accept that they have embraced an ideology full of bad ideas, no real moral compass, no real core of decency, And that that's not a good thing for the country. That for all the virtue signaling and the pretend to care about the poor, pretend to care about the oppressed, what they want for America, what the left is pushing, is not a good idea. It would not work out well for any of us. And by the way, it would not be constitutional. For me, the most amusing and troubling thing about this impeachment proceeding and the way that it's being presented it's the Democrats who are just giving, you know, giving these, these thunderous talking points about the need to defend the Constitution. These people don't give a you-know-what about the Constitution. Most of them have barely even read it, if at all. And yet this is the storyline that you hear. The House Committee on the Judiciary is introducing two articles of impeachment charging the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, with committing high crimes and misdemeanors. What is the uh, high crime or misdemeanor, by the way? We've already dealt with obstruction of Congress, which is absurd. And now we have abuse of power. 
Uh, how did the president abuse his power when he did not in any way use his power and there was no outcome from it? How can it be an abuse of power for nothing to happen that involves presidential power? I, I, I need someone to try and explain that who isn't engaged in the repetition of mindless talking points and doublespeak, which is all you'll get from libs these days. What happened to campaign finance violations, by the way? What happened to bribery? What happened to treason? I mean, we were hearing all these crazy things. None of that. Abuse of power. This president abuses his power. And, and this is where I also, I, I wish, look, Trump, you could use my help in 2020, my man. All right. You know, bring, bring me in to do some of this public messaging for you, because this point about interference, you got to stop letting them get away with saying Trump requested interference in the election. Asking for an update on ongoing corruption investigations in Ukraine does not translate to interfering in a U.S. election. That's not the same thing, not by a mile. That is them transforming something from what is completely legitimate and allowable to something that sounds nefarious, but, oh, by the way, didn't even happen. But, as I said, Adam Schiff has already told all the Democrats out there you know, we're, we're really worried. Nice election to be ashamed if something happened to it in 2020, letting us know that if it doesn't go their way, that's because clearly there was cheating. Clearly Trump had to be a cheater. There's no way that he could just defeat Hillary, one of the worst presidential candidates you could conjure up from anywhere in the political sphere. Somebody with tremendous name recognition overwhelmingly because of her rapacious greed and corruption, as well as a complete lack of warmth and charisma and personality that people want to be around. She got fancy jobs because of who her husband was. She was female and her last name was Clinton. That was pretty much the pitch. That's what we had. Sorry. Not enough. And now with Biden, they know, also not compelling in the least. I need Biden to explain this. Why is it that Biden keeps saying that his, that his son did nothing wrong and yet Hunter Biden is saying in interviews, you know, maybe I use poor judgment. I, I can, so, what, which, which is it? Nothing wrong or no, no, that was probably a bad idea. They should probably figure that out in the Biden crew. When you heard what the report said, did you, do you think this is vindication? It is. I mean, the FBI's had to wait two years while the president and his followers lied about the institution. Finally, the truth gets told. I hope it's not too late, but on all the important things, it tells the truth. People have internalized the lies they've heard. Good people have believe when a president says something. So they've heard treason, they've heard spying, they've heard informants in the campaign for two years. Are they going to pay attention now? James Comey is such a disgusting human being, such a smug and disgraceful clown. I, I run out of words. I want to start using expletives, but I cannot, of course, and would not do that on the show. But if you ever want to know what I really think of James Comey, next time you see me, come up to me and ask me, and you will hear some salty language because he deserves it. Because of what he has done to the institution of the FBI, to our sense of the rule of law, and also his willingness to stare the American people in the eye and really think that he's the righteous one. Does he forget that the FBI without any question, without any doubt, had to censure him for waging a petty vendetta against the President of the United States by sharing his memos with someone to share them with the New York Times in violation of FBI policy. This guy breaks the rules and then acts like he doesn't break the rules. He's a sociopath. He truly is a sociopath. He just thinks nothing else matters, no, no one else doesn't matter, you know, who else gets hurt. Yeah, how does Comey feel about what they did to General Flynn? You're going to tell me that's not a setup? James Comey is disgusting. And, of course, Anderson Cooper has him on his show last night on CNN. I'm wondering when Comey is going to get a CNN contributorship if he does not have one already in the works. I'll pay him a half a million, a million dollars a year just to show up and lie to the American people about things. Comey also clearly 
wrote before anybody even found out what was in the report, an op-ed for the Washington Post, James Comey, the truth is finally out. The FBI fulfilled its mission. This is out of the Soviet Union. I mean, this is what the KGB would have done. Just find what the truth is and go as aggressively against it with a lie as you can. Find out what the reality is, what the recognition of the public should be, what the facts say, and go in the absolute opposite direction. The FBI fulfilled its mission? Let's just do a quick review here, shall we? The FBI believed a dossier that only a moron could think is real and did, in fact, use that as the necessary, the necessary piece of evidence to get a FISA warrant against a presidential campaign and then in 17 instances omitted information or changed information or somehow screwed up so that there would be renewals of that FISA through the whole process. The FBI was so incompetent and stupid at the highest level. I mean, it really does raise questions. Who are the morons that run these places? I mean, if if they were any good at anything, would they have a different job? How do you get to be deputy director of the FBI? How do you get to be James Comey? Oh, that's right. He's not a law enforcement guy. He's a slimy prosecutor, folks. He's just a lawyer. He's Adam Schiff, but a foot taller. And yet, he pretends like there's vindication here for the FBI. Vindication. The FBI was dealing with the most sensitive case, politically speaking, probably in its history, all time, most sensitive case. And it was a clown show. The FBI's defense here is we are incompetent in the processes that we are supposed to obey to protect people's civil rights. And the FBI comes to us with an excuse that is hard to believe, but I guess there's no alternative. And the excuse is that they are so very, very stupid that they believed a dossier that even the anti-Trump zealots in the press refused to print or write about for months because they knew that it was crap. And yet they used it. I mean, now we know that the FBI is shockingly incompetent, shockingly reckless and dumb, even when dealing with cases at the highest level of national importance and that if handled poorly could undermine faith in the rule of law. Now James Comey's taking a bow. James Comey is... Ah, he's a schmuck. I think I can say that. Yeah, I'm allowed to say that on air. There's other things I would like to, but I have to leave it with that. And so here we are. It's also kind of weird, I think, how in the single most sensitive case the FBI has handled in a generation, which is investigating the Trump campaign, and also the single most sensitive federal prisoner the Bureau of Prisons has had in years, Jeffrey Epstein, unimaginable incompetence is the government's unapologetic excuse. You can't get mad at us, guys. We are so dumb and so bad at our jobs when it matters that it's just... You know, we can't do anything about it. That's their defense. And James Comey is saying the FBI fulfilled its mission. What was its mission, Comey? Was the mission to believe an utter fabrication, not do the due diligence necessary along the way that would have shown that it was clearly a fabrication, an opposition research document used then in official government assessments, used in official warrants against a U.S. citizen who was part of a presidential campaign so you could spy on them, and then continue on in this process knowing, by the way, when they, when they wanted a special counsel appointed, when McCabe, after Comey, got fired, which big, the biggest weakness of Trump's presidency is personnel. The worst decisions he, have made, he, he has made has been the people around him, who he's put in positions of power, who he's left in positions of power, the worst things that he's done. The worst. I mean, he, he, there's no question the president does not hire the best people. I don't know what else to say. They should have fired Comey day one. 
All you had to do was see what he did with the Hillary Clinton email fiasco. It was bizarre. Again, violating department policy, Comey knows better than everybody else, but, you know, it's just all about being the righteous man who's trying to defend the Constitution. I mean, Comey, is, he's a sociopath, psychopath, I don't know. He's got a problem. There's like a disconnect. Why doesn't he take some more photos of himself standing in front of weird bodies of water and doing, you know, deep thoughts by Jack Handy phrases at the bottom? The guy is a weirdo. And yet, he tells us that they fulfilled their mission. Was the mission to harass a presidential campaign? Was the mission to show us that the FBI, at the highest levels, the most sensitive investigations, the most senior people, is full of total morons? Because what America learned today is that a glorified Internet rumor padded with bad faith opposition research can lead the most powerful law enforcement agency in the world to open up a relentless investigation that ignores all contrary evidence in its quest to crush innocent people. That is what we learned. Was that the mission of the FBI? I ask you in all earnestness. Someone needs to explain this to me. Here, let's let's read a little bit for from Comey's op-ed, his little fantasy land propaganda hit. Quote, for two years, the president of the United States and his followers have loudly declared the FBI acted unlawfully and conducted a counterintelligence investigation of Russia's interference. They repeatedly told the American people the FBI had done all sorts of bad things, such as tapping Donald Trump's wires during the campaign, opening an investigation without adequate cause, with the intent to damage Trump and inserting secret informants in the campaign. Um, they did those things. I mean, you can get all technical about tapping wires versus FISA, but everybody understands what we're talking about there. And the FBI abused its discretion to open this investigation. That's why John Durham, who's also a federal prosecutor and the U.S. Attorney for Connecticut, was like, sorry, we don't agree with the Inspector General. The Inspector General is just doing CYA, protect the bureaucracy stuff. And then the insertion of agents in the campaign, oh, okay, This is such bad faith from Comey, but that's all he does all the time. They did put human informants in contact with the campaign to try to get information about. So they didn't put them in. They weren't employees of the campaign, but they ran human informants against employees of the campaign. This this is the the sleight of hand that Comey pulls. The truth is finally out. He writes. Oh, my gosh. The investigation included electronic surveillance of one person, Carter Page. The surveillance began with a court order shortly before the election. The order was renewed three times by federal judges, and the FBI kept it secret. Kept it secret. Nothing was leaked to damage the Trump campaign. Well, that's because if you leaked it to damage the Trump campaign and there was nothing there, guess what? People would have realized you were surveilling the Trump campaign. This guy's, I mean, really, Comey, I, you know... Uh, you can be director of the FBI. This is you can be director of the FBI and be a completely amoral, disgusting moron. That's or but but Comey is cunning. I should, you know, there's I think more than anything else he thinks he's a lot smarter than he is. He's not dumb though, but he thinks he's a lot smarter than he is. Uh, the Russia and Russia investigation was complicated. Not surprisingly, the inspector general found mistakes. Seventeen of them things the FBI should have done differently or better. That's always unfortunate, but human beings make mistakes. Oh, my God, Sancta Comey. I just, I feel filthy reading this. Really? Human beings make mistakes, like when applying for a highly sensitive classified warrant on a U.S. citizen who's working in a presidential campaign? They just change information to make it look worse? Yeah, that's a mistake anybody would make. Uh painful part is that millions of good people believed what they heard. My 89-year-old mother-in-law watching Fox News in her Iowa assisted living facility I mean, play the world's smallest violin, Comey became convinced that I was going to jail I repeatedly assured her there was 0% chance of that. It's all made up I would tell her. But I couldn't say that publicly because the investigation wasn't done yet Like the others accused of treason by the president, I respected the process and cooperated with the inspector general I'm sorry, did some of those people accuse the president of treason, Comey? Just wondering. 
in fact, was the entire premise of this FBI's investigation that's only possible in good faith from the FBI perspective if they're a bunch of morons, if they're really, really stupid people, which apparently is that that's the excuse. They're idiots. Sorry, we're just really dumb. Does that make you feel better? These people can come in and take away your freedom in the blink of an eye. You, you feel better that they will believe anything? I mean, you know, at, at what point is this? Oh, yeah, some some neighbor calls in and says, you know, I think that uh, I think that my neighbor is a Russian agent. And Comey, you know, the Comeys of the world send in a SWAT team and, you know, don't take any prisoners. He's a Russian agent. He's probably got guns somewhere and they just take you out. You have to ask the question, at what point, at what point is their stupidity no longer an acceptable excuse? And by the way, I don't think it is an acceptable excuse already because I don't buy that there was no bias. I don't accept the storyline, this fable we're being told now. Look at this with logic. Forget about what you're being told. Forget about the way that the journalists are posing this. Think about this. Journalists make major errors reporting on Trump all the time, and they're all negative about him. And they say that there is no bias. And now we see FBI agents making errors to investigate Trump and his campaign, all of which are negative about him. And we're told there is no bias. We're told there is no coincidence either huh, this is just the way it is. That seems a bit strange to me. We also know and have ample evidence that there are very senior people at the FBI who, because they were reckless and clearly thought that they were above ever having to account for this, that hated Donald Trump. We know Comey thinks that Donald Trump is Satan. We know that McCabe thinks the same. We know that Page and Strzok, I'm sure if we asked Bruce Orr, he would tell you that, yes, Donald Trump is terrible. We know Sally Yates was insubordinate and apparently too dumb to understand the laws she's supposed to enforce when she was acting attorney general. So we know she hates Trump. We go through all this. They all hate Trump. And at every stage of this process, James Comey signs off as FBI director on this FISA warrant, an incredibly sensitive case. And we're told that all these mistakes that happen, mistakes that are mind-blowing, about how Carter Page had already worked with the federal government to help them, had already been a source for the federal government, was was a patriot, and they made him seem like a traitor. That George Papadopoulos, they had people that had had heard him already say, no, I mean, the campaign's not actually coordinating with Russia. That's crazy. They hid that from the court, but we're all told it's an accident. You know, maybe they were just smart enough to know that if they were too blatant in the effort to run this investigation against this president, that could be a problem for them. Maybe they weren't such complete imbeciles that they put down in writing in the FISA warrants or in emails to uh, to each other about it, yeah, this is how we're going to screw up the Trump campaign. Let's get it done. Although, Strzok and Page pretty much did that with text messages. We're just supposed to forget all that. Not supposed to believe that there's any any bias at work here whatsoever. I I hope and pray that the Durham report approaches this, and especially the origins of all this, with a bit more integrity and a bit more honesty. Horowitz, the Inspector General and Obama appointee, did exactly what I knew he would. This was a whitewash. But Comey shows you, no matter how much they try, they can't make these facts disappear. Something was up here, folks. There's a risk we've become so numb to the lying that we just move on to the next outrage, and we can't do that. For two years, the President of the United States accused our premier law enforcement agency of treason, of trying to defeat him, of trying to stop him, and it turns out that was all nonsense, that was all lies. We have to pause and think about that because we need this institution. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you need the FBI, you need to see it clearly. And it's human, it makes mistakes, but it's not engaged in treason or a coup or politically minded investigation. That's just a lie. Oh no, they're just a bunch of morons who violate people's civil rights and believe fantasy internet rumor chatter and then try to destroy people, including by the way, the president, once they knew, why'd they continue the investigation? They knew the dossier was fake. Why'd they push for a special counsel? 
They knew the dossier was garbage. I want to talk about lying. They lied about how much the dossier was in all this stuff. 